This is an example of an ANOVA. So the question reads, the following data were obtained from an independent measures research study comparing three treatment conditions. Use an ANOVA with alpha equal to 0 0.05 to determine whether there are any significant mean differences among the treatments. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just look at the information that I have here. I can look at the uh, box with the treatment. I can see that there's three different groups here, group one, two, and three. I can see the uh, sample size for each group, eight, six, and four. The, the total, uh, after having summed the scores for each group, is 16 for group one, 24 for two, and 32 for group three. And then I can see the sum of scores as well on the bottom here, 40, 24, and 16. Uh, on the right column here, I see the n equals 18, which is the total number of scores that there were. And um, that adds up to, uh, obviously, it's equivalent to adding up these uh, little n's, so you get the big N. Big G is uh, what we used to call in, uh, in prior formulations the sum of x. So this is just summing up uh, these little totals here, which were the sums for the respective groups. And then we have the sum of the x squares here, which is given to us. The next thing I'm going to do is look at my formulas. And I know that I have to come, I have to uh, come up with an f statistic at the end. And so I'm going to need a mean squares between and a mean squares within. And I can see what the formulas are here for those. Uh, uh, ms between is the sum of squares for the between over the degrees of freedom between. The ms within is sum of squares within over df within. And uh, I can see what how I'm going to be, how I'm going to find the sum of squares and degrees of freedom as well with these other formulas. Uh, the SS between, we could see it's just the difference between the total and the SS within. The SS within, um, we'll come back and I'll explain these formulas, but we're just adding up the different sum of the squares for the three different groups. And this formula here, we've already seen, um, it's the, the sum of squares formula with the only difference being the symbol here, which is G, but it's the same formula. And of course we have the degrees of freedom. So the first thing that we've got to do is we need to state the null and alternative hypothesis. So that's uh, step one. And um, for these tests, the null hypothesis is always going to be that there's, that all the mu's are equal. So mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3, and the alternative hypothesis is simply that at, at least one of them is different. So uh, the next step is always to draw a little sketch for yourself just to kind of uh, give you a visual of what you're going to be doing. So this distribution looks like this a little bit, a right-tailed one. So we need to figure out what this cutoff value is right here, where our rejection region starts. So what we're gonna need is the, the alpha level, which is 0 0.05. And for the table that we're gonna use, we're gonna need the degrees of freedom for the between and the degrees of freedom within to be able to look up what our uh, critical value is. So to define the degrees of freedom between, we can come down to the formulas here, and we can see that it's little k minus one. So little k stands for the number of treatment groups. So we actually have three treatment groups minus one, which is two. So our degrees of freedom between is two. Our degrees of freedom within is big N minus K. So uh, our big N was 18. You can get that from up here, it was given. So we have 18 minus little k, which was three. So 15, our degrees of freedom between is 15. Okay, so now we gotta look up the uh, table. Um, so the table I showed you in lecture had 
was the table for critical values of 0 0.05 and 0 0.01. This one is easier because this is just a table for uh, alpha equal 0 0.05, and which is the one we're going to use because all our examples are going to use 0 0.05 alpha level. <laughs> so the way that this works is that um, the top row shows you the degrees of freedom of the numerator or the uh, between degrees of freedom. And then the column on the side, the leftmost column, gives you the degrees of freedom of the denominator or the within degrees of freedom. So we said that our degrees of freedom between was two. Okay, so we're gonna scan down this second column until we get to our degrees of freedom within, which was 15. And you can see that that's right here, right? So that's 3.68. So that's what our cutoff value is going to be for this statistic. <laughs> okay, so now we can actually start uh, the calculation. So uh, the way I always think about it is that we, we look at the top and, and this is what we're gonna have to get to, but we're gonna have to work our way, we're gonna have to start at the bottom, right? To, to fill in all of those little missing components. So uh, we already got these degrees of freedom. The total we don't really need, but we can calculate, right? So that's just 18 minus one equals 17. And you could see that all the degrees of freedom of the total should uh, be the sum of the degrees of freedom between and within. And you can see that that's the case. 15 and 2 is 17. So the next thing we're going to do is calculate our sum of scores total. So this is the most complicated um, calculation that we're going to do in this whole process. And it's pretty simple because we don't have to, we just got to plug in the uh, numbers. We don't have to calculate these ourselves, like the sum of uh, the x squares. We don't have the raw data. So um, let's just go ahead and start with the sum of squares total. So I'm going to set it here on the side, SST for total. And that's going to be our sum of the x squares, which was given to us. So that's 464. 464 minus, and that's, uh, G is also given to us, and you can see from the table here, it's 72. So we're gonna take 72 and square that, and then set that over big N, which is the number of scores, and there were 18. So this is a, the formula that we gotta solve for the sum of scores total. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use, um, Desmos to calculate that whole thing and I'm going to take a minute here I'm going to punch it up in my calculator Minus 72 square over 18 so I'm getting 176 Okay, so now I have my sum of scores total and I can keep progressing upward uh, to get to my, my final formula. <coughs> Excuse me. So the next thing is to calculate the sum of scores within. So this notation might confuse some people a little bit. So this is just saying that um, we're gonna do a summation and uh, I equals one all the way up to K, right? So our ending point is gonna be K. Little K was the number of group treatment conditions, which was three. So this is saying that I is gonna be, in this formula, I will be replaced first by one. So that'll say SS1, meaning the sum of squares of the first group. So that's the first term in the summation. Then it iterates to, this becomes two, and then that becomes sum of squares the uh, two, which refers to the sum of squares of the uh, of the second treatment group, and then of course uh, I go uh, goes to three, and this becomes sum of squares of the third group. So we're just gonna sum those three, and that's simply what this uh, formula means. So let's do that over here. We're gonna do sum of squares within, and from the table we can just know that we have to sum these three numbers. So 40, 24, and 16. So we have 40 plus 24 plus 16. And I'm gonna put that into my calculator. 40 plus four plus 24 plus 
16, and I get 80. <coughs> Excuse me again. Okay, so then now uh, we did the sum of squares within, now we gotta do sum of squares between, and that's simple. Uh, the simple formula, there's a different one, but the simple one to use is just to take the difference between the total and the sum of squares within. So let's just do that down here. Uh, so our sum of squares between is just going to be this total one minus this within one. So we have 176 minus 80. And we get 176 minus 80. We get... 96. So uh, we calculated all these sums of squares. So we're almost done, right? We're almost at the top. We're basically done with all the, the heavy lifting. So now we just got to take those numbers that we found and make these ratios, the mean squares within and between. And when we get those numbers, we create a ratio of those numbers to get our final F statistic. So let's do the mean squares with, uh, within which is, of course, always the sum of squares within over the degrees of freedom within. All numbers that we got already, so <coughs> let's do that here. Mean squares within is going to be sum of squares within over degrees of freedom within. Okay, so our sum of squares within is 80. So we have 80 and the degrees of freedom within uh, was 15, so we have 80 over 15, <coughs> 80 over 15, and we get 5.33. So now let's do our mean squares between, and then that's uh, sum of squares between over degrees of freedom between. And our sum of squares between was 96. And our degrees of freedom is two, because that's the number of treatment groups minus one. So we get that 96 divided by two is 48. So now we got these two numbers. Now we create a ratio of these two to give us our final F statistic. So we have uh, the MS between on the top and the MS within as a denominator. So our MS between was 48 and our MS within was 5.33. And that gives us 48 divided by 5.33. And so we get this uh, number 9.0056. Let's just say round to nine. So if you go back to our sketch up here, we could see that nine would be like out here, really thin part of the tail somewhere. So it's... <coughs> It would definitely be statistically uh, significant. It's in the rejection region. So our final step is to uh, decide what we're going to do. So we're going to reject the uh, null hypothesis and conclude that there is at least some difference between at least one of the means. At this point, we would conduct some post hoc testing, but uh, I'll do that in the next example.